Welcome to Chapter 1, History of Linux. This will be a brief overview of what Linux is and where it came from and how we're going to use it. So first of all, what do you think an operating system is? What do you think it properties of an OS is? What do you think, that, why do we need one? Take a couple seconds and actually write down some thoughts. Pause the video. Ask yourself, what is an operating system? Most of you were like most likely thinking about Windows as being the most common operating system and it's one we're most familiar, familiar with. However, there's a second one, an operating system category called Unix or Linux systems. And for those of you who are using a Mac who want to say something, you're actually your Mac is actually running a Unix kernel. So before we go a little bit further with um, operating systems, I want to talk about the difference between uh, Windows and Linux in kind of a simile form. So imagine that you have two goals you have to get to, same distance, and this goal can be scaled based on however big your project is. Windows, I messed up there, Windows is actually uh, gives you a bicycle. Now, I don't mean it's derogatory, it's a nice bicycle, it has 21 gears, it has um, shocks, it's a, very, it's a very nice bicycle. My drawing does not do it justice. However, it is a bicycle. Linux, on the other hand, will start off with a brick wall blocking your path. Then, it will also have barbed wire on top of the brick wall. Then, you'll have a crocodile moat. Then you'll have some landmines. And finally, you have the shark tank. If you get through all this, you will end up having a very cool jet fighter. Fully loaded, they go Mach 5, whatever they can go nowadays. Very cool jet fighter. So this is this is a demonstration between the difference between Windows and Linux. It's kind of silly, but it gets the point across. Uh, Windows is easy to use up front, and you can do a lot with it. Linux is going to be far more complex and takes a lot longer to learn. This also demonstrates something else is uh, in the end Unix and Linux will be more powerful than uh, developing Windows because you usually you have more you can customize it to what you need more specifically. However, this is also much more complex. If you think about Windows Server, you have to have the most advanced hardware, whereas in Linux, you can run five-year-old hardware and run most servers effectively. Because Windows is trying to make everything convenient, it will inadvertently limit you. Linux expects you to do everything. So back to the initial question, what is an OS? What does an OS do? Uh, most people think of a graphical user face or GUI when they think of an OS. Uh, while the computer interaction is very important, it's only a small point of the OS. Think of a computer where you may run other things other than just a laptop or server, such as cars, appliances, cell phones, and televisions. So if you're the last computer scientist on Earth and you have to redesign the OS because for some reason we've lost any operating system, what does it need? Essentially, you're going to need a file system to handle different uh, users' uh, system files, task scheduler to allow different programs to run on your pro, uh, computer, provide an interface for the user, human users anyway, provide a means to edit and create files, provide a means to create an executable, manage a memory, think like cache, and some other stuff. Now this is, you're going to learn all about this in operating systems, but I want to give you a brief idea. This is a typical chart. The OS acts as an abstraction layer for the hardware, and sits above it. The OS also controls the hardware. The user programs run on top of the operating system, and as long as they're inside their own program, they don't have to worry about anything, but should the user program require the hardware, it will then have to request the OS for permission to use the hardware. This allows multiple programs and multiple people to be on one computer and play nicely with each other. 
Also, the farther you go up this graph, the more abstract it becomes, which means you don't have to worry about reinventing the wheel. You don't have to worry about um, making a dis display driver to print text or graphics. You don't have to worry about memory management. All that's done for you, and your program can live on top of this abstraction and not have to worry about the nitty gritty details. Imagine if we didn't have this, we would not have the ability, or we would have to start from scratch every time a new processor came out. So this is one of the primary reasons we want an operating system. With that perspective in mind, what is Unix and Linux? Well, Unix was developed by developers who need a set of modern tools for computing projects. And by modern tools, I mean a text editor, a file system, and a system that can handle multiple users in a command line mode. So do not think like a modern computer computing system. In 1975, Bell Labs made Unix and widely, gave it widely available to institutions. This led to the four-year effect because students would be familiar with Unix, learn it, and promote it with their future employers. As more research was done in computer science, academics began making changes and additions to them. And I'm talking about Unix here at the moment. One popular version was the Berkeley, uh, or in Berkeley became known as BSD. Mac OS is actually based a lot on BSD. Uh, Richard Stallman decided to announce the new project. He wanted to make uh, news, not Unix. It wanted to be a completely free operating system. His wording was a little careless, as he intended this to be free as in freedom of press, not free beer. But the point is someone could sell or distribute the license, and the user who bought it or gained it would be able to change and improve and redistribute the software. This concept stems from the idea that hardware would be expensive and software would be cheap. However, as you've kind of guessed, this is not how it turned out. With Moore's Law and how technology developed, the hardware is actually the cheapest component and software is still fairly expensive. While the GNU project was in full uh, swing, a Finnish undergrad student was working on Unix. As fate would have it, the GNU project had everything but the kernel and Linux had everything but the uh, system utilities. So using GNU, he created the first version of Linux. This is the first time you could run a computer without having licensing software. Unix has grown in popularity for several reasons. It has standards. It adopted POSIX, which made it easier to program for. It has many applications. There are many free and commercial products. This can be a double-edged sword because sometimes open source is not necessarily the highest quality. Peripherals. Uh, barring proprietary hardware, Linux uh, usually has um, more drivers than the Windows. Uh, however, proprietary such as graphics cards, it will lag behind. Uh, Unix was developed on C, and therefore it can be and has been ported to almost every possible uh, system. And emulation. You can emulate different operating systems with Linux. Linux also has virtual machines. This is where the operating system runs as a program on top or inside another operating system. We'll actually be using this. It provides us several different abilities or several different things for us, such as security, isolation, and you know, just to ease, ease of testing. So we'll actually be using a virtual machine. More on that on the next lecture. But these are some of the reasons why you want to use a virtual machine and why it's becoming more popular these days. Ken Thompson wrote Unix in 1969. It was assembly language, which means it had, was depended on the processor. Therefore, it's very difficult to um, pr uh, port. He wrote B in 1973, and then it was extended to C. Linux is a kernel-based operating system. Linux supports uh, multiple and simultaneous users, and Linux can run many tasks. Linux provides a secure hierarchical file system. We'll talk about this in detail later. And Unix will and can, does provide two different primary sources of interfaces, command line interfaces, uh, where you have to enter keys. The system will interpret it and run the, uh, run the command. And then, although it's difficult to use, you'll actually find it's quicker 
to use the command line interface than the graphical mouse and keyboard. And it also supports the GUI, graphical user interface, which is the one you're very you're probably most likely familiar with.